Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to perform a USB BIOS flash on the ASRock B650M HDV M.2 motherboard. This is going to be great if you're buying a new low end CPU for this particular board, which probably isn't supported straight off the bat. If you're not too sure what BIOS you need, you can head over to the ASRock website. We'll show you this shortly, and you can actually check on your motherboard. You will find Actually, on the BIOS chip, there is going to be a little sticker on there which tells you exactly which version you've got on the board. This specific version has version 1.21. Unfortunately, the processor we're looking to purchase is the new Ryzen 5 7500F, which actually needs a newer BIOS. So we can't flash the board from the BIOS because we can't get the system to post without having a older processor, which is supported. So we need to use a USB flashback. Now, in order to perform this, you're going to need a few things. One of them is going to be something to actually rest the motherboard on. The motherboard box makes an excellent choice. Obviously, you're going to need the motherboard itself. You'll need an ATX power supply, and also you will need the 24-pin main power plug, which goes into the motherboard. That plugs into this socket here. You don't need to plug in the EPS connector. That's absolutely fine. And you will need a USB drive. Now, the USB drive does have to be able to be formatted to the FAT32 format. Now, ideally, you want your drive to be 32 gigabytes or less. If you have a larger drive, you can create a smaller FAT32 partition on the drive. We'll have a separate video listed in the video description. So, if you do need to do that, you can do that. So, if you've got like a 64 gig drive or 128 or even a one terabyte drive, you can create a smaller partition on the drive to help you do this process. But the motherboard itself will only actually recognize a FAT32 partition. So with all that said, let's head over to the computer and we'll get this done. So we're going to need to go over to the website for the ASRock motherboard in question. Make sure you get the right version. I think there is actually a Wi-Fi version of this board also. So just make sure that you have the right one. So ours is a B650M HDV slash M.2. In order to get support, rather than clicking at the top here, scroll down just a little bit, depending on the size of your screen, and you can head over to the support section here. If you go into the support section, if you're not entirely sure which BIOS version you actually need for the processor you're trying to get running, head over to the CPU support list and you can go through. Now, clearly there isn't a great deal of processors on the market at the moment for this particular platform, so it is gonna be a little bit easier currently. Like I said, the board we have got currently is on version 1.21. So this is suitable for quite a few of the processors. Unfortunately, some of the pro versions and also this one here at the bottom, the Ryzen 5 7500F, is only supported on version 1.24 or newer. So let's head over to this section here for BIOS and then we can see which version we can get. Now there's plenty of different versions available. So the earliest one there is 1.24. That's the one we need as a very minimum. But as always, it's probably better if you can to get a newer BIOS. Now some of these will be beta. The beta BIOSes for AM5 at the moment generally do become full-on BIOSes very shortly after. So don't be too concerned about getting a beta for these. They are updating on a very regular basis. And in fact, of the date today, that is actually the new BIOS out today. So I would be slightly hesitant to go for a brand spanking new one on the day of release because you never know, it may be withdrew due to uh, issues with it, etc you could go for this slightly older one. So this one's about four to five weeks older. So you could do that. That's still a beta, but you can do that if you want to. These are mostly for updating the AGISA codes. The very latest one actually addresses an issue with slower boot times for XMP and Expo enabled RAM. So in this particular instance, I'm gonna actually go with the very newest one because I do want to do some testing on this board. So we'll see what's going on. So download this. So we're gonna click on the global download link then you get asked where you want to save. So I'm going to save this particular one to the desktop just for the ease of this video. It is a zip file, so we are going to need to unzip it. So let's get it saved. And when that's done, you can minimize this window or close it should you wish to. So on our Windows desktop now, we have our zipped file. So we're going to right click on it and then we're going to choose Extract All. Then click on Extract. So now we've extracted the file. This gives us our ROM file. Now, unfortunately, due to the way that these flashback BIOSes work, they're not used to dealing with complicated file names and they don't really know what they are. So we actually have to rename this file. So make sure that you can see the file extension. If you can't, you can go over into view, 
and you can choose to show file extensions. What we want to do is to rename this to creative.rom. So that's creative as in creative labs dot rom. Doesn't matter if it's upper or lower case, it doesn't really make a difference for this particular instance. When we click on that, because we haven't changed the actual name at the end, that's fine. So that is now ready for us to put onto our USB drive. So before we do that, let's look at our USB drive, which is going to be plugged in. So there's actually another boss on this one. So what I'm going to do just for the sake of it, and also it's good practice is we're going to format this drive. So actually on the USB drive, right click, choose format. You need to have FAT32. This one's already set to FAT32, so that's fine. The allocation size can be set to default. Volume label, I would leave blank, and that is pretty much it. So when you're happy, click on format or start. This will erase all information on the drive, so do be aware of that. If there's anything on the drive you need, now's the time to save it before you click on start. But when you're ready, click start. It will give you the information saying, yes, it's gonna erase this disk. When you're happy, click OK. And there we go, our format is complete. So that drive is now blank. We click on it, so there's nothing there. So let's go back to our Windows desktop, go into our folder, and there is our creative.rom. So we're gonna right click on that, gonna choose copy. You can choose cut as well if you want to, the choice is yours. Then go back to your drive, your USB drive, right click and choose paste, or you can use the, uh, the icons at the top here. So there we go. One way of checking as well to make sure the file is the right size is look at it there. It should be 32 megabytes in size. So 32,768 kilobytes is basically 32 megabytes. So that is absolutely fine. So now we can eject this drive from the computer and head over to our workbench. So now's the fun part, at least for some people it is. So we've got our power supply. This is currently in the off position on the switch on the back. So we're gonna take our 24 pin power connector and plug it into the 24 pin socket on the motherboard. Make sure it's firmly in place and clicked into position. And that is basically all you need to do in terms of actually powering the motherboard. You don't need EPS. If you've got your system fully built and it's inside a case and you've just come to this point, you're like, oh, why is my PC not working? You get the CPU error light is on. Don't worry about it too much. You don't have to disassemble the whole thing. That's a little bit pointless. My suggestion would be unplug the EPS connector from the top if you can, and also remove some of your RAM sticks if you've got some installed. That for me works much better. On a fully built system, there is a tendency for the system for trying to boot. So by removing the RAM, removing the EPS, it just limits the system's ability to boot anyway, because we don't want it to do that. We want it to do a BAS flashback. The next thing to do, we've got our drive here. So we're gonna plug that into the port, which is marked at the bottom, which you're probably seeing from some B-roll. Insert that into there. If there's anything else connected in the back on your IO, Again, I would suggest removing it. It makes sense to do that. You don't want to complicate matters if you can help it. So if you've got keyboards, mice, etc., unplug all of that stuff. Ideally, less is better. So now when we're ready, we can turn on our power supply. So that is in the on position. Now what I generally do, you don't have to do this, but for me it works well. So just press and hold the BIOS flashback button. Hold it for about three seconds, or at least until the light starts flashing. So I'm gonna press and hold, so one, two, three, and we should see there, there is a green flashing LED. There is a little observation window just next to the port itself. Uh, where are we? That side there. So you can see what it's doing. Now, the light itself should change speeds, flash slow, fast, etc. When the job is completely done, you may find that your power supply will turn off and the board will shut down. So there'll be no illumination on the back. If for some reason that green LED goes to a solid green, that means that it cannot read the drive or cannot read the flash file. In some instances, because ASRock do make boards for other OEMs, system integrators, etc., you may actually find that your motherboard has a very slightly different model name, in which case it's possibly been produced for one of those system integrators, in which case you need to get the BIOS from your system integrator rather than directly from the ASRock website. So that looks like it's going to be doing its thing. So we're just going to carry on let that flash and uh, we'll come back when it's finished. So this should take somewhere in the region of about four minutes, four to five minutes. If it takes any longer than that, it continues flashing, then there's a strong chance that it hasn't worked for some reason. Maybe the file's corrupted or maybe you need to try another USB flash drive. 
Again, if the green light stays on solid, that means that it cannot read the drive or it cannot read the file. So if you get a solid green light at the very start, it basically isn't gonna work. So turn it off and start again. Now ours has worked. Uh, it doesn't do any shutdown or anything, so you will need to manually turn the machine off. Easy to do, just turn off the power to the power supply. That is off. And once you've turned off the power supply, then you can remove your USB drive. And then it's entirely up to you what you wanna do. Depending on the state of your system, if you then want to populate it with the RAM, plug in your EPS connector, put on the CPU, all those kinds of things, I would strongly suggest if you can, and you have the ability and you've got the space to do so, try the system out just on a flat test bench before you start putting it into the PC, connecting up all your front panel IO, all that kind of stuff. Because if for some reason it still isn't gonna work, then at least there's less variables for you to work with. Now, of course, if yours doesn't work for some reason after you've gone through this process, please feel free to reach out to us either in the comments section below, but ideally, if you can, head over to our Discord, go into one of the technical support rooms. There is actually a specific room now for BIOS help. So if you can go over there, ask one of the moderators or myself to have rights so you can post images. And if you can, just post a few images, mention what your motherboard is, what you're trying to do, what you've tried doing, give us as much information as you can, and we'll try and help you as best we can. And hopefully we can get your system up and running as quick as possible. So there you go, that effectively is it. Again, any problems, reach out to us in the comments or the Discord. But for now, I think that's it. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.